Welcome back. This is Paul Huggins with Artist Consulting. Today, we're going to look at a way to embed images in our reports and to use what is called Base64 encoding to bring in these pictures and these images and use them in visuals and tables and matrices. So let's dive right in. What we have here to start off with is a simple you know, list of stores and then some random amount of dollars spent at those stores. It's just a ran between to get this and then a measure built off of that to get us this table for these values right here. Now, what we're going to look at is how do we get these pictures to appear right here? You know, it's currently called Base64. We can rename that to restaurant or store or location. But really, there's a lot of flexibility that we have in this. So there's two main ways that we can do this. I'll show you the first one. And then I'll discuss the second one briefly. So the first way to do this is we can convert images that we have on our local files or in a SharePoint. We can download those images and turn them into base64 encoding. So I'm going to drag this handy thing over here. This is just the, the website that I use for it. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, let me grab a, an image we can pull in real quick. So we have an image now. We're just going to pull in this one image. This is an image of the Carter's logo. We're just going to drag that right here. And it's going to give us basically the, the encoded base64 for that image. So what we would do is we would hit this copy image right here. And this is basically going to give us a very, very long text string that we can use in Power BI. So now that we have this image right here, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Power BI. We're going to go to our modeling, transform data. And we're going to look at this. So what we have is this images table that I created using this enter data up here. I assigned it a category for each one of these, so whichever store this is at. And then I pasted this PNG in here, this file, this, this really long uh, base64 image string right here. So a couple notes right off the bat with this. This is really useful for small things. Uh, I know I, I wanted the table size limit when it was around 40 or 50 images. I, I hit the, the limit of what I could put into a table manually this way because these strings are so long. So if we wanted to, we could have multiple tables, and I'll show you how the, uh, the modeling works for that in a second. But secondly, some of these, if the strings are you know really extremely long on this, they can get chopped off where you reach the, the cell limit for this field. So what you can do in that scenario is you can basically split it in half into multiple columns right here, and then use a measure to concatenate all of it together. So that's one route. I haven't come across it that often, but I know that people have. So keep that in mind. If for some reason the image doesn't populate, but you did everything else correctly, it may be because this string is actually too long to fill out this field. So it just kind of clips it off when it hits that hard limit. So you can split it into two and then concatenate it back together. So what we have, once we have kind of, you know, the images and then this category that we've, you know, pseudo created over here, I'm going to close out of this. We're going to go to the modeling over here on this side. And we basically have our sales over here, our fact table. And then we have our images out here as a dimension table. We have this, you know, one category assigned to multiple categories on this, you know, image data dollars table or basically our, our fact sales table. If we take a look at that real quick, all we have is these categories with these, you know, dollars spent in here. Just a, a ran between to get some data in here. So we have that one to many relationship. So another thing to point out is for these base 64s, we have to set the data category for these as image URL. If we don't do that, if you put us uncategorized or whatever it defaults to, It'll return us that really, really long string. So you see we have this super long string that doesn't obviously mean anything. We want it to be set as an image URL. And then we have the ability to then show these images in here. Uh, one thing that I will point out as well is when using this method, it's really useful to have all of your images the same size. 
you know, I put some ones in here that, for example, this this Kate Spade logo that's really small. That's because the uh, the the full size of the image was large, but the logo itself was small. You know, so it doesn't scale as properly as you would like. And I would kind of ensure that they're all of similar size, like this. You know, Taco Bell, Whataburger, Chipotle, all those kind of in this top section all seem relatively well fit for this area. And the one thing to point out as well is we don't have to do this manually with the with the you know base encoding, copying and pasting the values into here. We can actually connect to a database like this. So if your database has these you know image URLs stored, you know for example in a SQL server or something like that, most often it'll pull up in your transform data as you know just a binary field. It'll say you know binary that you can then expand out, which will then give you this base 64 kind of um you know prefix and string you're looking for so this is a really neat way to avoid having to connect to sharepoint it's a really neat way to avoid kind of some of the headaches with that uh you know so there's two main ways that we discussed here one was by copying and pasting them into here if your if your photos aren't changing that often this is a great route to go or if not at all then it's a great route to go but if your photos change often, it'd probably be best stored in a SQL server or something along those lines with a binary field that you can then expand out in Power BI to get these um, these image data base64 kind of string URLs along with your categories. And then you just merge that and join it, join it with your category over here, and then it allows you to do stuff like this where you can put the, the logos out here. You don't have to then, you know, go insert image or anything like that. And this is all embedded in your report. So users can see it. They can access it easily. And this is really just a really neat way that we can use images in this base 64 kind of methodology to create some neat visuals. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thank you all, and I appreciate your time.